I have a statement I'd like to read here. I guess you all know now that the market closed with up 102.27 points and 604 million shares traded. I've just finished a meeting with my economic advisors, and we thoroughly reviewed the developments of the financial markets of the last few days, and the actions we've taken thus far, and our options for additional measures. We've been in constant contact with financial leaders of both countries, with the exchanges around the world, and with market participants. While I remain concerned, I'm pleased that the steps taken by the Federal Reserve have had a salutary effect on the markets. Interest rates are down across the spectrum. I'm also pleased with the actions by two major banks today to lower their prime interest rates. I believe that there remains room in the markets for a further decline in interest rates. And specifically, I'm pleased that the bond market is strong and the foreign exchange markets are stable. Yesterday, Secretary Baker and his German counterpart reaffirmed our agreement with the Germans to coordinate our economic policies to provide for non-inflationary growth and stable exchange rates. Finance Minister Miyazawa issued a similar statement reaffirming Japan's intent to cooperate with other industrial economies and follow economic policies that will provide for a sustained growth in the Japanese economy. And then a phone conversation with Prime Minister-designate Takeshi at this morning, he stated that his top priority was to maintain stable economic relations with the United States. The United States remains committed to the Louvre Agreement, and today I signed the preliminary sequester order under the Graham Rudman Hollings Law. However, I think it is preferable, if possible, that the executive and legislative branches reach agreement on a budget deficit reduction package. Accordingly, I am directing that discussions be undertaken with the bipartisan leadership of the Congress for that purpose. The economic fundamentals in this country remain sound, and our citizens should not panic, and I have great confidence in the future. President, how about... Are you willing to compromise on taxes? I presented in my budget a program that provided for $22 billion in additional revenue. This was not necessarily taxes. And I am willing to look at whatever proposal they might have. Mr. President, someone described as a senior market uh, or economic analyst in the administration said the market might have been so weakened by this crash that there could be a recession as early as next spring. It's pretty hard for anyone to speculate on that. I would like to point out, however, that the only way that could happen is... Louder! How you know it is? Oh, yeah. Then if you have people who get putting off purchases of automobiles, refrigerators, things of that kind, because they feel hard time, yes, that would bring on a recession. But there is nothing in what has happened here to result in a recession. Our recovery, we have a higher percentage of eligible workers and workers ever in the history of our Mr. President, let's see if I can do it. Can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to personally, personally sit down for the Democrats in an economic summit? I don't know whether that's necessary or whether we will do it with some of our people, but certainly I am willing to be a participant in anything that can bring us together. Let me point out, you mentioned the Democrats. For virtually a half a century or more, they have controlled both houses of the Congress. And for more than a half a century, there has been, with only two years except single year exception, a budget deficit. But you never submitted a balanced budget. No, because I said from the beginning, and having predicted for 30 years that the deficit would get out of control as it did, that there was no way. You could balance the budget now in one year, but we could set ourselves on a course that would result in that. And 
the end result was that I have never gotten the budget that I asked for, even though the law says I must submit it to the Congress, and the Congress is responsible for the death. Nope. If you heard that, it must have been the helicopter. statements to make. Yeah. Both happy. You know about the market. It closed at 186 and some fraction and some 450 million shares traded. But the most important news is the 
9.15 tomorrow morning, I will leave here to go out and pick up Nancy and bring her home. But, yeah, well, that's not as happy as bringing her home. What? The witch is over? Well, it would appear to be, and certainly when more than half of the loss has already been regained, uh, that sounds as if someone discovered that the economy is still rather sound. Wait, wait one second. What? Oh, yes, because we've got a crisis that they brought on over the last 50 years of a deficit that's got to be resolved. Well, I will listen to what they have to say if they will listen to what I have to say about the fact that raising taxes has always resulted in a lowering of the revenue. Well, does it make you mad that somebody else is guessing what I think? I don't know. We haven't heard yet as to what's been happening over there in Moscow. I, I don't know. This was about the summit. And what it That's an idea. What? Well, I still say it's unconstitutional. There's a part of it that I think is fine. He did? Well, not to me directly. We heard that they've made a statement about us wanting a summit, but they haven't officially notified us. I think that they were waiting for the second one. All right. Hey. All right. I'll give Nancy all your love. I told you to start the